Um, thank you for the introduction, and um, I'll be speaking to you about the city of Leipzig, why the city of Leipzig. We are, after all, in Africa, and we've been hearing and I've been learning many things about challenges of African cities that we might not have, but I do believe there's some things to tell. First of all, Leipzig is the sister city of, of, uh, of Addis, and uh, we have a now very active partnership program going on with, uh, with Addis. And uh, there's been a long tradition of people from Ethiopia coming to study in Leipzig, also at the t from the time of East Germany. So, uh, and I believe Leipzig has had a, a unique transitionary path um, over the last 30 years, and I'd like to take you on that trip with me. So, um, I think I have some slides. Uh, where do I press? Up oh, here we go. So, Leipzig's inclusive growth model, and I'd like to take you on um, basically three levels of what we'd call inclusivity is on, first of all, the planning process. Uh, secondly, inclusive <coughs> interventions in space. And thirdly, uh, inclusive policies towards individuals. And Leipzig has, as I titled it, from decline to growth. And you see some of the pictures from the late, 90, uh, from the late 80s at the, uh, at the end of what was then East Germany. Uh, you see in the middle the demolition of about 50,000 housing units that we undertook in the 90s. And uh, this is where you can find us in the heart of Europe. We are a city of now 590,000 uh, people. We are the fastest, um, the relatively fastest growing city in Germany, about 10 to 15,000 people a year. Uh, we were, at the time of, uh, of East Germany, the window to the world twice per year with a the, with the trade fair. And that is something, I think, that uh, that idea of, of a liberal openness and of a um, to the world, which is deeply ingrained in the city's identity. Um, these are the th things you might take away. We have a strong industrial history. We, have, we are the origin of the peaceful revolution of 1989. We're also the origin of many music and cultural um, contributions from Bach to Mendelssohn. And we are uh, also proud to be the location of the Leipzig Charter of the Integrated and Sustainable European City. The business uh, logos we put up there, that is the renaissance, the industrial renaissance of the city after it has lost 100,000 manufacturing jobs in the early 1990s. Um, this is now from our propaganda department. Now I show you um, how Georg Schwarzschwied looked in 2010, and of course with a different angle of the photographer, how it looks in 2015. Uh, that is of course to drive home the point that we were somehow successful in intervening in, in areas, uh, but not intervening in the whole area, but f focusing on corners and focusing on arteries of these neighborhoods. Uh, this is the general sort of mood curve of Leipzig from the relaunch of East Germany in the early 90s, then to a gradual decline, a almost depression type um, around the turn of the century, and now to a sustained urban growth path along the way. And, uh, and this is to, to be mentioned that all, the, all along that line, Leipzig is one of the poorest cities in Germany. Um, uh, this is on the Addis Partnership. You can then look that up uh, later uh, once everything is online. Integrated urban development as our first line of inclusivity. Um, as I mentioned, the Leipzig Charter from 2007 as our founding document of how we want to also conduct city planning within um, our city. This is uh, the latest planning process of our integrated urban development concept. You see lots of workshops, lots of forums, lots of um, participatory forums, but what is most important in the end, it was approved by city council because we've had many planning processes before, they were very participatory and very bottom-up and very, and very uh, ingenious, but in the end they didn't get traction with local political decision makers. So this one was approved and I think this is where um, planning um, in, in all its ingenuity needs to come in the end to political confirmation. Um, this was from the opening um, ceremony where we focused on the, on the main topics, countering the city, um, egality of chances, integration, mobility, and also the question of density and urban space. 
These were some of the formats uh, you see on the bottom right. We engaged the Leipzig Lego Club to um, build some of the scenarios that uh, we, were, we were discussing. We held citizen forums. We also um, used some of our techniques of randomized invitations to citizens to, 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 to not only get the usual suspects who would show up at these uh, meetings, but to also, uh, and also to oversample, for example, young women uh, in these invitations in order to have in the end a balance to the natural presence of old men with a lot of, with a lot of time who would voice their opinions on city matters. Um, th this is the result, uh, Leipzig grows sustainably, that's our, sort of our strategy, rose as we try to call it, which we try to now push down the throat of every city service that we can get a hold of, um, and of course it defines many strategy pieces that are circled around the central um, target of Leipzig grows inclusively, sustainably, sorry. Um, social inclusion as part of the sector concepts, um, that is sort of our heat map of social demand across the city. The red areas, of course, are the ones where we have to intervene stronger. Coming to the second line of inclusivity is inclus uh, inclusive intervention in space. Uh, these are mainly interventions that took place in the time of decline of the population, at the time when, Germ um, when Leipzig lost 100,000 inhabitants within 10 years, uh, to migration to West Germany, to a declining birth rate, and to migration to the suburbs, um, and found itself uh, with a decrepit housing stock at the time, uh, with a uh, with the legacy of a socialist system with no um, equity capital and low ownership rates in the population and, as I said, with urban flight from the city between 95 and 2005. Now, what the city did at the time was to say, we need to maintain certain areas where we have what we called a guardian house at the corner of an important street sign, uh, of an important street intersection, where we would uh, where we would pay a nonprofit to be part and and a sort of renting that house out to students and uh, to artists and basically to signify to uh, th um, the residents this neighborhood is not abandoned we still believe in you uh, but we have a temporary usage at the corner second intervention green spaces we've used the the demolition of also factories and, and infrastructure to invest into green spaces with a, uh, with a lot of support from the European Union and the federal government, that needs to be acknowledged. Uh, but um, investing in these green spaces was also a part to, re, um, to make these, um, the city more attractive. Uh, we also allowed, and I, what I would call breaking with, uh, with zoning orthodoxy, we allowed individual home building in parts of the city where you would normally build multi-story homes. Um, and that, in fact, uh, created a, a term called Leipziger Freiheit, this, the, the Leipzig freedom. So basically, it was the idea, if you wanted a townhouse um, in the center of a city, you could come to Leipzig, something you couldn't finance in Hamburg or in Munich. And so that, that and also the a marketing campaign where we showed students living in large flats, um, uh, that sort of created the image that there is, and the true image that there is a lot of opportunity in, uh, in Leipzig, and you can still find an empty factory floor if you want to set up a, 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 um, a gallery club or whatever. Uh, but of course, our, our building inspectors will come after you once you become too successful, so I, can, um, I cannot guarantee forever. <laughs> Um, that is, of course, the emerging challenge, affordability. Uh, we have the issue of what is perceived as gentrification. We have also violent protests against gentrification. That is not to be diluted. It was mentioned that there is also, you know, urban space is a space for contest and is a, is a space for protests. We do have sometimes uh, opponents of gentrification setting fire to our construction vehicles uh, for school building. That is, of course, uh, the wrong type of protests, but of course it's a debate that is to be had and we like to frame it in a more constructive manner of actually promoting social housing, uh, also through new federal payments on social housing and to, to enable the network of self-users um, and also to bring that to new, uh, to new areas of the city. Um, this is um, something we need to work on very hard, uh, also in the light of German uh, sector regulations, not so much building regulations, but sectoral regulations, be they on kindergartens or school 
uh, school grounds or parking is that in fact to, to overlay multi-uses in a, in, a, uh, in a denser city. So uh, take away from that, it's not just the building code, it's also the sector laws from the different usage points. Well, I can come to the last point in my last 30 seconds, which is the comprehensive social policy, and you do see the little Playmobil person in a wheelchair. That's sort of what we try to promote with our schools, that we have access for, um, for uh, people with, uh, with, uh, with different disabilities, but also from social backgrounds. As I mentioned, Leipzig is a relatively poor city. It is, um, has a number of so social problems, although we have declining unemployment and uh, um, declining, oops, so now my thing goes off here. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm out of time. Um, we need to build more schools. Um, this is how we're organized. This is the general discussion where my f former World Bank identity as a social protection person comes in. We can discuss more of that later. Um, and the road ahead uh, will bring um, these challenges to our city, and um, we are confident that we can, uh, we can counter them and we can master them in a spirit of inclusion and participation as we've done over the last 30 years. I look forward to the dialogue, and um, I would like to thank anyone, I'd like to thank everyone for the conference. It was one of the most fruitful and rich experiences I've had in my three years as a mayor. So thank you all for that.